Hey everyone, welcome to High Point Church. Thank you for joining us.
begins with openness, the willingness to come alongside someone else, to pour out, care, invest. It's about sharing the journey, doing life together, growing, forging, becoming. It's about selflessness, caring enough to walk through the valley even when it's painful. To love people as Christ has loved us. It's rejoicing when they rejoice, hurting when they hurt, being a hand, an encourager, a friend. We were not created to wander alone. For as iron sharpens iron, so one person sharpens another. What's up, LifePoint? It's so good to be with you. Uh, whether or not you're, you're listening in right now in the morning or uh, at 8 a.m., at 10.15, or in the evening, or one of our midweek opportunities, I'm so glad that you're able to tune in right now. Uh, my name is Will Vickery. I work with the, the youth here at LifePoint Church, and so shout out to my, to my youth peeps. But so today uh, I'm going to be talking about uh, a very specific verse in Scripture that has to do with the importance of relationships. Um, and so th I titled this message, Forged. Forged. Uh, I'm sure some of you are probably fans of the, sh the show Forged in Fire, you know, where you see all these really like awesome blacksmith guys and they're just like hammering the metal and they're making these really cool 
tools and knives and swords and axes. It's just, it's awesome. Um, But recently, my wife, for our anniversary, she surprised me and she took me out to Belleville, Texas, about an hour or so, hour and a half outside of here, uh, towards, I guess, towards Austin and Katy, that area. And she surprised me by taking me to a forge in Belleville where the, the guy who is the, the bladesmith uh, there, his name is Cowboy. <laughs> I'm not going to pronounce his name. It's too, his last name. It's too hard. Uh, so, but he just goes by Cowboy. And they do this thing called Forge a Memory. And so she took me there and I got to forge my own knife. It was super cool. I actually brought it here. I can show you guys. It's a little small, so you may have to maximize your screen if you haven't maximized it. But so I got to make this knife out of a horseshoe, okay? I got to make this knife out of a horseshoe. So I actually got to heat this up, to, to uh, bend it, hammer it, uh, bevel the edges, uh, I did it all. I did it all. It was a super cool process. Um, but it was also uh, very intense. It took a lot of work, guys. I don't know how many of you have had the opportunity to work with hot metal, like hammering it in a forge. It, it takes a lot of work to move metal. A lot of expertise, a lot of experience. You make lots of mistakes. And if I didn't have Cowboy there to show me what I was doing, uh, I'd have just had a, a, just a, a mess uh, on my hands. But there are a few points that I want to take from that. And God really put this on my heart recently, um, just about the season that we're in and, and how you and I need to uh, be impacted in, in good ways uh, through the midst of the COVID-19 and whatever circumstances you're going through. And so the takeaway I, I have from, from this forging process, based on what Scripture says, is, is the idea that you know, metal has to have something outside of itself um, to, to change it, right? A tool can't be changed or sharpened, right, or forged unless it's acted upon by something outside of it right? Um, I couldn't make this, this, this horseshoe become a knife uh, unless we use tools other than the horseshoe. I know that's maybe a little complicated, but let me say it another way as well. The shape that this horseshoe was going to take is dependent also upon uh, the, the expertise or the influence of the person on the outside or the tool on the outside, Okay. And so not only is this metal um, going to, uh, it has to have something outside of itself to take shape. The shape it does take is dependent upon the type of influence that is being put on it from the outside. And so what I want to talk about really quick uh, with you guys is the reality that you and I will either come out of this season in life sharpened or dulled. Okay, Uh, we're going to look at a passage here uh, in Proverbs uh, 27, 17. So if you have your Bibles at home, feel free to flip there. Um, I'm going to be reading from the NLT, the New Living Translation. And so here's, here's our scripture. It says, as iron sharpens iron, so a friend sharpens a friend. Depending on what version you have, it may, may just say, as iron sharpens iron, so one man sharpens another. Either way you look at it, it's using the analogy of just like in a forge, when you're hammering that metal, iron versus iron, it takes something outside of itself to influence, and in this case, in the scripture, it's saying sharpen it, right? To sharpen a tool, you must have something outside of it. Right, another tool. Metal must sharpen metal, and it's saying the same thing applies to us. You and I need people to influence us, to make us better, to make us sharper. Okay. Now I have lots of takeaways for you guys from this verse. It's pretty straightforward, Um, but let me just say this: loners are losers. (laughs) Loners are losers. Now. Don't think that just because you like to spend time alone, I'm calling you a loser. Um, What I'm really trying to get at is the fact that you can't live life alone, okay? You can't do life on your own. 
You and I need people, okay? We need people in our lives to help us through every circumstance that we go through. We need to surround ourselves with people. The first not good in the entire Bible is when God notices that Adam is alone and he says, it's not good that he's alone. Let me make a helper fit for him. And so we should not try to just turtle and just be all by ourselves and shut out everyone around us. We need to have people around us to help us and to live life with us. There's a scripture that goes perfectly with this. It's Ecclesiastes 4, 9 through 10. This is also in the NLT. It says, two people are better off than one, for they can help each other succeed. So it is better, right, to have two or more, we could say, than one, right? Why? Well, if one person falls, the other can reach out and help. Right? If you're alone, then don't nobody to help you. But if you've got other people around, man, they're there to help you when you fall. And so it says, but someone who falls alone is in real trouble. <laughs> How many of you um, have faced really difficult circumstances in your life and you wished that you had people around you that, would, um, that you could reach out to or that would reach out to you? You know, sometimes we are, are guilty of, you know, just we turtle and we... Uh, we, we kind of just go inside and we try to stay to ourselves. And really desperately, we're wanting someone to check on us. We want someone to be like, hey, are you okay? Um, we're not willing to go and ask others for help, but we wish we had people in our lives that were willing to just intrude into our personal space and be like, hey, are you okay? Can I pray for you? Do you need help? I see you're fading. You know, so we can't do it alone. And if you are trying to live life alone, you are losing out on the life that Christ has planned for you in many ways. So the second one, free yourself from fake friends. Free yourself from fake friends. Now, <clears throat> many of us, when we use the term friend, we use it very loosely, right? And so I'm going to ask you to redefine your word friend, and I want you to examine your friend list. I'm not talking about Facebook friends. I'm not talking about Instagram followers. I'm not talking about the people on, uh, what is it, Snapchat or you youths or even if you adults use TikTok, whatever it is. I am not talking about that, okay? I understand you can have some really great conversations and you can, you can really, you know, I guess have relationship with someone via the internet. However... Liking someone's post or loving someone's post or following someone online is not a substitute for real relationship. Oftentimes it is fake, right? It's oftentimes fake. And we can just get in the habit of scrolling through stuff um, and using, you know, uh, digital friends as an excuse to having real relationships where we really communicate with people and get to know people, okay? Okay. And so uh, I like to say and have heard said many times the idea that we need people that are willing to live in the trenches with us, uh, you know, and I don't think we get that if we merely have relationships based on Facebook and other social medias. So this next one is selfish smells and selfless cells. Selfish smells and selfless Cells. Now let me break this down for a minute. Maybe you'll remember these because I tried to make these so provocative you would, you would key in and listen up. Man, when something stinks, two things happen. You want to deal with it and get rid of the smell or you don't want to have anything to do with it and you avoid it. Okay, Selfishness is just like that. In relationships, when people are selfish or when you are selfish, it becomes a huge problem in your relationships. It becomes something that people end up focusing on and it causes conflict, or two, they avoid you, okay? On the other hand, selfless sells, meaning when people are selfless and they give to others generously without expecting anything in return, man, people are attracted to that. Now, we could say you just, you, 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 uh, you get what you give, but that's a good rule to live by, 
But it, I mean, you don't always get what you give, right? And God calls us to give whether we get in return or not. That we are supposed to live selflessly in our relationships, okay? Uh, the other thing we could say about being selfish versus selfless is really stop being lazy. A lot of our relationships are fading during this season because you and I are not being intentional with reaching out and communicating. We may be guilty of following them on Facebook or Instagram or whatever, or maybe even we're showing up in our digital church online and we're kind of saying some chat things. But outside of that, we're not interacting with anyone from our life group or our churches um, or our families or friends. And so we have to do a little bit more, and we have to communicate. Maybe you need to set up weekly check-ins. Maybe you need to set some notifications on your phone or your calendar to where it says, hey, call John. Call John. Check in with John. Um, call so-and-so. Zoom so-and-so. Set up this meeting. You know, as Pastor Allen said uh, uh, like last week or a week ago, he was talking about having digital or virtual coffee, you know, and I... And so do that, okay? Do that. Don't wait for other people to check in on you. I'm guilty of that. I'm sure you guys are guilty of that. Do not wait on other people to be the initiators to, to build and foster a relationship during this time that we're in, okay? And also pray. Praying is not a, something that should be selfish. It should be selfless, okay? We need to pray for others. Okay, we need to pray for others. Okay, next, hang out for real. For real, okay? Now, I understand that some of you listening are like, oh man, man, this thing is still a big deal. And it is, right? It is, and we need to be safe uh, when we're choosing now as the state is kind of reopening, people are getting out more. Um, we need to be very careful and very safe. However, we also need to seek to have authentic moments with other people, whether virtually or in real life, okay? Whether virtually or in real life. Now, that's what I mean by hang out for real, right? So maybe, for instance, I'm going to pick, I'm going to pick on my life group, guys. I'm going to pick on my life group. This is my life group, so I'm going to pick on them. We have communicated multiple times about wanting to have a Zoom meeting, Right? But, man, we have dropped the ball. I'm just going to be honest with you guys. So I know those of you, some of our life group, you're going you're gonna to be watching this. But it's true, right? It's difficult, especially right now. Um, but for real, we need to seriously get intentional and dedicated to hanging out. It's not good enough to just do it via text or on social media. We need intentional, real connection. Okay? So, <clears throat> our verse. Let's review this really quickly. As iron sharpens iron, so a friend sharpens a friend. So, this passage of scripture is mainly, obviously, talking about people, right? People can sharpen you and make you more like Christ. They can make you a better person. Or people can influence you in very wrong ways and bad ways. They can tempt you into doing things and living a lifestyle of sin that's going to lead you to live in disobedience to God. Okay, And so one thing I want you to realize is that you are not a, what's the word I'm looking for here, a passive person who is not receiving influence from the people around you. And, it, and here's the dangerous thing. When we have these relationships with people on social media and Instagram and things like that during this time that are not really authentic and it's hard for us to foster genuine relationship with those things, it doesn't work that way when, it's, when it has to do with negative influence. We can be heavily influenced in negative ways through social media and uh, those, those, those kind of fake relationships, okay? Um, it seems that it's always easier to be influenced badly than it is to influence uh, in a good way, okay? Um, and, and that this passage, although it is talking about people, we cannot limit it to just people, right? There are lots of things that influence us. There are things that influence us. It could be um, how you spend your money. 
It could be things that you spend your time doing, your priorities. Um, Media, goodness, we could talk about the media forever. What are you putting in? Is it making you better or making you worse? Is it making you sharper? Is it making you dull? Um, So uh, video games, right? I don't care if you're one of the youths or if you're an adult, right? Video games can be a huge time suck and the, the, the actual content of the game can be impacting you. Do not think you are passively being influenced by these things. Oh, it's just a game. Oh, it's just a movie. Oh, it's just a TV show. We are being influenced by these things. You are not passive. They either sharpen you or they dull you. Social media, we've talked about that way too much already. So let's talk about something else. The news. Oh my goodness. The news. Now I'm not saying that you don't don't need to watch the news. Yeah, we need to stay up to date on current events. But man, how toxic. How toxic are these, are these conversations that I'm seeing online with people about news articles, um, what we're hearing on the news channels, whether it's conservative or liberal or whatever it is. Man, guys, if you're noticing, just you got to check yourself. If you're noticing that you're becoming a little toxic and how you're communicating with other people, maybe you need to take a break from the news. Maybe for do, it, do a little fast <laughs> from, from your news stations, uh, okay? Um, and instead uh, of, of these things I just mentioned that really can dull you, focus on things that can sharpen you. Are we really taking advantage of reading our scriptures? Are we doing daily devotionals? Are we praying? Are we taking time to get alone with God without distractions, without our phones, and talking to Him? Are we, are we utilizing tools that have been made available through LifePoint? Are we using Right Now Media? Are you using the resources that Pastor Allen has posted online for your children? Um, are, are your youth tuning in to our youth events online on YouTube Live? Are you doing things and putting things in that make you more like Jesus, that sharpen you? Now, the reality is, you and I can be sharp in some areas and, and others. Uh, you know, just like this, the knife that I, I forged, um, there may be areas where this knife is sharp and there may be areas where it's not so sharp, okay? You and I have the ability to be good in certain areas and very bad in others. Uh, an example of that in the Bible is actually King Solomon. King Solomon was a, was a man who was considered extremely wise But in the same way, he was also kind of foolish. You see, Solomon was a man who made amazing decisions as king. He was just. And and the kingdom of Israel was powerful and wealthy uh, and had a great army. um, And it had never seen its kind of economic just booming uh, with any other king. However... When it came to obeying God, man, he was super disobedient. And actually Solomon's sin is one of the reasons why Israel ended up being uh, torn apart by a civil war and then being conquered by uh, the Assyrians and the Babylonians and the Persians. That's, that's partially uh, Solomon's fault. And so Solomon was good in some areas, but he was also kind of bad in others. And so, guys, we have to examine ourselves. Are there areas of your life that, that are, you're doing well? You're sharp, man. You're obedient to the Lord in that area. Then great. Let that, let that encourage you. But also, don't turn a blind eye to the areas that you know you're struggling with. There are areas all of us struggle with. And that we have to be real and take intentional action to deal with them. Okay? We need to sharpen those things. And what the Bible is telling us, we can't sharpen ourselves. We need an outside force, an outside influence to help us be sharpened. And so that can be people. That can be God's word. It can be God himself through his divine power and asking him to do that through prayer. And so you guys, in this season with COVID-19, you're going to come out one of two ways. You're not passive. At the end of the season, when this is all said and done, um, you're going to be, you know, uh, sharpened. You may be sharpened. 
And you may have used this time to focus on God's kingdom. And you're going to live for Jesus Christ with laser focus. Or you will go through this season and you'll be distracted. You'll be focused on other things. You will, you will develop bad behaviors and bad habits. And you will become selfish and focus on those selfish desires. And you will be dulled out of this experience. I don't see any other option. You're not passive. We will be either come out of this sharpened or we will come out of this dulled. And so, guys, my, my real call for you guys uh, is, is this, okay? We need to get ready. We need to get real. And we need to do it now, okay? We need to get real, okay? So be honest with yourself, in the areas that you need help, man, seek the body of Christ. Pray, talk to people, have the virtual coffee. If you feel comfortable with it, go meet up with people and have a coffee or have dinner or lunch. Obviously, keep your six feet distance, right? <laughs> Be safe. But you guys, we need each other. Do not let this season go by wasted. God has given us a time where we have actually lots of, lots of things have been removed from the priority list. God's given us a time to focus on what really matters. And that's him. That's living a life that's obedient to his son, Jesus Christ, who bled on the cross for your sins. And so use this time as an opportunity to get real about your sin and to get ready for the season that God has for you next. Amen.